Okay. Oh. Everybody now, right? Everybody got their quiz back? Okay. Anything else from the quiz? While you guys are looking at it? Yes. On um, number two, uh, 2A, uh, it asks for the degree up the third degree. Why is it not third degree? Which one did yours? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, What's the degree of this polynomial? Third, third. third degree, because that's the highest degree term. See how we have the word degree, which is different from the word power. If degree equaled power, we wouldn't come up with the new word degree. What's the degree of this polynomial? It's not third, it's not fourth. Seventh. What's the term that has the most letters in it? This one. How many total letters? Three X's, four Y's, seven letters. This is a seventh degree binomial. I like it. So what do you, uh, everybody had a problem where the answer was not a polynomial because it had a variable on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And everybody had a problem where it had a couple different letters. You had to add the powers to get the real degree. So the degree is, of a term is the total number of letters I see. Three X's, four Y's, seven letters. All right, anything else from that quiz? You guys doing all right? I really am asking, you guys doing all right? <laughs> you guys seem a little, it is, uh, we're getting a little deeper into the semester. Some of you guys are feeling a little plowed over, buried. You just got to come see me if that happens. If you get a little behind on homework, you got to come see me. Yeah. Um, 2F. 2F. 2F, only 1F. Oh, yeah. Perfect. What did your 1F say? My 1F said uh, 2 negative third power. So again, <laughs> let me do one that nobody had, everybody had. Uh, let's see, what is um, 6 squared? 36. 36. 36. Because all it says is square six. That's all that has to happen to the six. What's the difference here? There are two things that have to happen to the six. Negative power, which means... Negative power means... Flip. Reciprocal. I love it. It means flip. And you still also have to... Square. What is being raised to a negative two power? The six. So it's all a few people are... Peeper? A few people, a few people doing this, this makes no sense. What is being raised to some power having a two in it? The six is. So those two sixes flipped out. So if six squared is thirty-six, six to the negative two is one over thirty-six. Seven squared is forty-nine. With seven to the negative two, one over forty-nine. It's the same thing, just flipped. So this is only square it. This is square it and flip it. All right. Square it and flip it. So if I had 5 to the negative 3, what would that be? 1 over 5 to the third. I love it. And then you can do 5 times 5 times 5. You get 125. Unlock it. Is that all right? You guys see that? So there's that one little difference between these two. One of them doesn't flip, so it's 36. The other one has a flip in it, so it's 1 over 36. Gotcha. I like it. Anything else from the quiz? Yes. 1D. What did yours say? Sweet. What did yours say? Oh, well, what's yours say? No, no, no. What does yours say? All right. There you go. I felt like I was in that movie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You guys got that reference? All right. No, okay, that's all right. You should watch some more movies. So if I have, um, 
this here. <laughs> okay. So everybody had this problem, but nobody had this problem. I wonder how many people don't really understand what I mean. You're just like, this is weird. Every single person had a problem that involved the same operations this does. What operations are in here? Multiplication. Multiplication. In fact, each of these is multiplying each other, right? But also there's exponent. Which one comes first? Please excuse my ah, exponents before multiplication for damn sure. So some people did this multiplication in the third power just kind of, there's not three of these. There's one of these. There's three of these. Just see what I'm saying? So you can't just multiply these together and then do a cube because then you're saying there's three of these also. There's only one of these suckers. Order operation saves your ass. So you do this first. What is two cubed? Two times two times two. Eight. Eight. Eight to the? Six. No. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Nine. Nine. M to the? Third. Third. And, then, and now you can do, the next step you would do is this. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. So some of you guys had 1D was this. Some of you guys, I, I think it was probably 1E was looking like that. I can't remember. Different versions were different orders. Did you take that? Yeah. Question? Yeah. Hey. Can I have something else for you? Dude, I can't find it. All right. All right. Is that decent? I mean, so the next step would be negative. Now, I got too many people say this. I had too many people put a three here. Some of you guys are like, yeah, what was wrong with that? Well, what's the, oper the only operation in this whole thing? Yeah. Multiplication. Multiplication. So how in the world do you take negative five times eight and get three? So you're thinking about... I really want you to get this. There is a negative 5 there. There is an 8. There's no 9 in this whole thing anywhere. If you understand what I just said, you see why we do different things. They're not the same. This is not the number 9. What does this mean? There are 9 A's. There is no number 9 in this whole damn thing. But there is a 5 and an 8. That makes 40, not 3. Shit. But what do I do with the powers... Add them. You don't make it A to the 18th. There is no 2. There is no 9. There are 2 A's, 9 A's, so now there are 11 A's. So why do powers act differently than numbers? Because they're, they're not the same thing. In fact, one of them is not a number. It's not the number 9. It's 9 A's. I, I really... Because part of your brain goes, you told me this, and now you're telling me this. And you're like, whatever, I'll just do one of the two and pray that I got it at the right time. you got to understand why... It seems like we're doing different things than before. If you ever feel like you did this in this chapter, but now you're doing something totally different, you got to come see me, because that is never true, ever. So, yeah, now this is going to be A11, and then M6. Six. Six. Yeah. I like it. So you don't suddenly say negative 5 times 8 is 3. Right? You add powers when you multiply like bases. Because you really are just consolidating how many of that thing you got. How many A's I got? I got 11 now because I had 2 there and 9 there. Yes, sir. So long time you would ever multiply your exponents if you have an exponent outside of your parentheses, then you would... Yeah, then you multiply powers when you, yeah, when you raise something with a power to another power. Okay. Totally. Mm -hmm. Now watch, I really... Now what, what, so for example, what's this? What's, um, so people freak out that A times A cubed is A4... But 1 times 3 is 3. But there's no 1 times 3. There isn't. There's an A and 3 more A's. But watch this. What's 2 times 8? 16. But isn't 8, isn't 8 2 cubed? Didn't we see that earlier? If I write a number in the same format that we write a variable expression, meaning a base to a power, then all the properties are the same again. So if I write this as 2 cubed, and this is 2 to the what? So what's 2 times 2 cubed is 2 to the? To the third. Fourth. 1 plus 3 is 4. And what is 2 to the fourth? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 
It's 16. It's the same damn answer. I really, do you guys? So when it's written in this form, there's a certain thing you do to it. Even if the base was a number, you would still do that same thing. But when it's written as a number, we already have rules for that. You had to memorize what negative 5 times 8 was. But here, if I write it as this, I can use the rules of exponents. Because the exponent rules don't give a shit what the base is. They just care that it's the same. So 2 to something, 2 to something, is 2 to the add those. and Which is still 16, still the same answer. So it's the format of the thing that tells me to use a certain procedure. Okay, maybe, maybe. So I had quite a few people do stuff like that three thing. Or I had people do 12 divided by 5 is 7. That's a neat one. That can't be true. We know that's not true. You can't suddenly go, well, now we're here, so now it's this. No, it's not. It can't ever change. Crazy. All right. What, what would this be? What would make this true? Is if it was a to the 12th divided by a to the 5th. And that would become what? A to the 7th. Because I divide 5 away, so of course I got 7 left. That was better than crying, so it's all right. <laughs> Anything else from the quiz? You guys all right? Yes, sir. Uh, oh. Right. Here, Mason. Nothing else from the quiz? Okay. Uh, we got a little bit into factoring, so I'm going to cover what we did last time, and then one more form of factoring. I got a little handout. Um, did I bring those? Tomorrow I'm going to have the practice test. The test, of course, is this Thursday. Thursday. And it's through 6-2? Through 6-2. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. We're going to try to get through there. Um, so here's what we did last time with factoring. So chapter 5 is all about adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing polynomials. Chapter 6 is kind of like undoing multiplication. It's all about ripping them back apart. Where would something have come from? So... Um, just to get back into this again. Okay. So the instruction said simplify here. Simplify is a quick way of saying carry out all the operations. So if there's a times, I'm going to multiply. If there's a minus, I'm going to subtract. So that's what simplify means. Factor is the opposite of simplify. It means tear them back apart, right? So if I said simplify 5 times 7, you'd say 35. If I said factor 35, you would rip them back apart to be 5 times 7. How are we doing? I like it. So what happens here? Simplify this. So it means actually do the multiplication. So what do you get? 20x cubed. 20x cubed. Thirty-two x squared. Now let me ask a really, really dumb question here. What do they both have? Well, they both have four x squared because that's what I gave both of them. Then they both get a four x squared. So if I didn't have this in here, how could I still see that? Well, what goes into twenty and thirty-two? Four does. And how many x's can they both give? Like how many x's? He can give three, but he can only give two. So they both can give two x. So if I wrote this again, if I wrote this as 4 times 5 times x squared times x plus 4 times 8 times x squared. 
I'm going to try to get you where you don't have to do this. This is a good like step to do, trying to break them apart the things they have they both have in common. Then you can see that they both have a 4 and an x squared. Of course, right now we're like, well, duh, Jeff. That's what you freaking gave both of them. But I'm trying to show you. This is how you look at a problem. They give you this kind of problem, and they say, factor it. You say, what do they both have that I can take back out? What did somebody give both of them like this? Okay, so then you could write the 4x squared out front, and then write what's left, 5x plus 8. So, if I had... And I promise it factor, and it looked like this. Gotcha. You really do attack this, the numbers, and then the letters alphabetical order. You just kind of attack it bit by bit. The more you can break a problem up into parts, the easier math becomes. So I sort of kind of did that naturally, and that's why math came to me quick, because I just was lucky. I was just naturally broke things up into parts. Um, look at the numbers. What number do they both share? Five. 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 Look how far over I'm writing that, by the way. I'll show you why. How many M's do they both have? Two. He's got two, but he's only got one. one. So see, he's got one, for sure, because he's got two. This guy's only got one. So how many M's do they share? One. Notice the shortcut here, the lower power is the one you can take out. So I can take out an M, and how about the N's? Three, because three, that's the lower power. He's got three, he's definitely got three because he's got freaking four, so they can both give N cubed. So I really, keep in mind, it's the opposite of what we're doing here. He's trying to undo this. So I can take out N cubed. <coughs> So now, what was I doing when I put this in? Multiplying. So what am I doing when I'm taking this out? Dividing. 15 divided by 5? 3. M squared divided by M? M. N cubed divided by N cubed? M. They're all gone. It would be times 1. Somebody... So when you bring it in, you multiply it in. When you're taking it out, you divide it out. It's too nice to believe. This is harder always, but not that much harder. Division is always harder than multiplication. <coughs> Minus 25 divided by 5? Five. 5. I had an M. I took it. I had four N's. I took three of them. So I have one N left. Sweet. I like it. So this is what we call GCF, greatest common factor. Right. I took out the biggest. I didn't take out two ends because I could take out three. I take out the most, the greatest, common, what they have in common, factor, a part that's being multiplied. Greatest common factor. But I call it undistributed. Because you really are distributing in reverse. You're undistributing something. Maybe, maybe. So here, you guys try this. Ah, sweet.
All right, so what number comes out? Four. 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 Even if you thought just a two comes out, the numbers that are left would still have a two in them. You still see that. You've got to make sure that whatever you do something, you make sure you did enough. It's sort of like reducing a fraction. You might have to do several steps. So four is the biggest thing that comes out. What about the x's? How many? Three. I can take three out. Because he can give three, so he can definitely give three. He'll have a couple left. And then how many y's? Four. Because he can give four. He can give four. Is that pretty cool? Uh, so the shortcut there is you take the smallest power, because that's the one that everybody's got. Right? And then what's left? Two. Three x's, three took. Five y's, I took four. That's exactly what you can say to yourself. I had this, I took this, what's left? I had this, I took this, what's left? Minus 12 divided by four. I had five, I took three, so now I got two. And I had four, I took four. None. And then you look real quick, any numbers left common? No. He's only got y's, he's only got x's, so there's nothing else common letter-wise. How are we doing there? Is that, how are we doing? You guys all right? I like that sound. It's better than, huh? Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. All right, let's try this. And then I'll unleash you guys on some. Maybe I'll do one more thing. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, so watch this. Here we go. That's a 16, yeah. How do I make that? Uh, so now there's how many terms? Three. Three. I don't really care. It's the same idea applies, but now I've got to consider all three things. So yeah, what number comes out of all these numbers? Two. Just two. How many A's can I take out? One, because that's the least power I see. Everybody can give an A. No, but not everybody can give two A's, so it's not fair. How many B's? Two. How many C's? Four. Okay, does everybody see where all those came from? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> People don't ask questions, just go. Yeah, and it's because, well, why did I take a 2 out? Because 16 has a 2 in it. It's got other shit, but it's got a 2 in it. He's only got a 2. <coughs> so that's the thing you can take out of everybody. Same thing happens, he's got 3 Bs. He's got freaking 7 Bs. He's only got 2. So how many Bs can each of them give 2? You try to take more than that, he's going to freak out. He's only got 2 to give. That's why the shortcut is smallest power. So the numbers you should be familiar with trying to figure out what goes into all of them. And the letters is a beautiful shortcut. The smallest power you see. Now there's a really easy mistake to make on this problem. 16 divided by 2 is 8. I had two A's that took one. I had three B's that took two. And I had five C's that took four. Beautiful. So far so good. Everybody I love it. When I say something like this, it's an easy mistake. Everybody's like, I ain't gonna say shit. <laughs> Wait, I don't mean What's up? Do you have to do that to everyone? I'm, yeah, I'm about to. So there's a first term, second term, third term. Oh, gotcha. That's why I put this a little over, because if you put it right underneath this guy, very often people just forget this guy. But you gotta write what's, what's got, how do I check this first one, for example? I would re multiply and make sure I get this again. Maybe, maybe. So what's left here? Negative 4 divided by 2. I had an A, I took it. I had 7 Bs, took 2. B5. Stay with me now. I had 6 Cs, took 4. And then the mistake people make is they'll go, oh, I took all of this, so I'll stop. But that doesn't make any, yes. This divided by itself is 1. If I stop here and re-multiply, do I get all these back? 
mode. No, I don't. So that's a placeholder. But actually, the more technical way to look at it is it's just it divided by itself is freaking one. So course is the one there. You can't factor and end up with less terms. Okay, maybe, maybe. Not GCF anyway. Let me just be careful. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. And that's the factoring? That's GCF. Oh. We're going to learn several different ways of factoring. This is the most basic. This is the one you always try first. All right, so let's let's take this to the next, the whole other level. Say again. This is the basics of factoring, guys. So we're going to get into the real full factor. Say again. There's more to these. Yeah. Oh, I love you guys. All right. So we got this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, written down. <laughs> you can think about it more later. That's the answer? That's, yeah, that's the answer at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Everybody got that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. By the way, I want to show you uh, a little motivating. All right. So if I had this, obviously, what's the answer? Negative one. X equal negative one. Now watch this, watch this. Okay, what's the answer there? There are two answers. What makes this zero? Do you see, if this number, if this number was zero, wouldn't this times this be zero then? Don't I have two numbers multiplying right here? I got whatever this is, x minus 7, times whatever this is, x plus 1. You guys see that? Yes. So what makes this zero is negative one, right? So I get the answer negative one. But what else? What makes this zero? Seven. Seven. Where's the negative one? What makes this zero? If x is oh, negative one, yeah, okay. yeah. So either this number has to be zero, or this number has to be zero. What's the only way you can multiply two numbers and have the answer be zero? Is if one of them is the only way to multiply two numbers and have the answer come out to be zero is if one of the two numbers is zero. 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 <laughs> so tell me, five times what is zero? Zero. 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 What times negative eight is zero? zero? Zero. I mean, so one of them has to be zero. So either this one is zero or that one is zero. So then you get x is seven. Or x is negative one. Now, now, real quick side note. All right, I like to do this a lot. Um, let's just look at this thing by itself for a second. What if x was nine? What number is this? And what number is this? So if x is nine, this times this is twenty. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, I like. It. Yes, yes. So these really, that is just one number. If I knew what x was, that is one number, ain't it? Mm -hmm. If I knew what x was, that is one number. So I can, have, I can let x be anything. But if x was this or this, then the whole thing is zero because then one of them, one of them, one of them is zero. Do you guys get that? This is called, I love the name. It's different the books call it different things, but it's called the zero product property. Right, it just means if you've got a zero in somewhere in your multiplication, you're going to get a zero at the end. That's the only way to get it. Okay, maybe. So, watch. What if I had this? I'll be quiet. <laughs> you guys. I have a way to solve this now. We didn't have a way to solve this before today. Now we have a way to solve this. What comes out of both of these? X. X. What's left? What makes this zero? Five. Uh, here's a really silly question. People make so much out of this. What makes that zero? Zero. So what are the answers to this equation? Five and zero. We weren't able to do this problem until we knew how to break them apart. So that's the first thing we do with factoring is we use it to solve problems where the power is higher 
than one. Before today, we really only knew how to solve problems that had an X to the first. If you look back through everything we've done, those are the only kind of equations we solved. Right? Factoring allows us to solve more complicated equations. Maybe. And it's not just because we're like, let's make it harder, let's make it hard, because real world equations are going to be much more complex. So we have to keep trying to get towards that. They're not going to be linear all the time. And in fact, very few of the times will something be linear. Is the, is the hurricane going to come up and get us? There was actually two hurricanes that might have come up and got us recently. You guys know that? Or they would have been, anyway, tropical storms. I'm always rooting for that because I miss rain. But uh, <laughs> the equations that govern that damn path ain't going to be no MX plus B shit. There's some weird shit. Well, what's the density of the air? What's the temperature of the surface of the, or the ocean? Well, oh my God, those equations are going to be gross. So as, mu as much as you might hate math or whatever, uh, the reason we do what we do, we keep getting it harder and harder because we're able to handle it as we move along and we're getting closer to real life stuff. Okay, maybe, maybe. Okay. Let me do, I want to do a real quick example. Um, I think we're in the fourth example. Okay. Just something really simple little thing and then I want to show you uh, something I think I've shown you once before. Um, All right, how do, you, how do you factor this? You group it. Yeah, what comes out of both? How many x's squared? And how many y's? One. One. So you had three x's, you took two, so now you have x. x. You had a y, you took it. And then x squared y divided by x squared y is one. Now watch, watch. Just that problem would be done if the instructions said factor, you're done. Is everybody with me? Mm -hmm. So that problem would be done if the instructions just said factor. Here's Jeff doing his weird shit. What if x was uh, 3 and y was 4? You really want to just go with me for a second. You know, like, that's all we ever do, buddy. If x is 3 and y is 4, what number is this? That would be... 3 cubed times 4 minus 3 squared times 4, right? So that would be 27 times 4, 108, minus 9 times 4, 36. Cool? Yeah, okay. And 108 minus 36 is? 72. I like it. Where the hell did three and four come from? Uh, they could be anything I want them to be, can't they? That's the whole idea of them. Doesn't matter what numbers I make this, no. <clears throat> no wait, no watch. If x is three and y is four, what's this? Three squared times four, and what's inside? Three minus one. So isn't this nine times four is 36, and what's three times one? I mean, three minus one. Two. Two. 36 times 2 is a way to factor 72, isn't it? So every time you factor an expression, you have just factored an infinite number of numbers. Let me say that again. Because <laughs> what could X and Y have been? What could they be? Anything. How many of that is there? <laughs> infinite number. Holy shit. You guys, I really... So why is factoring variable expressions hard? Because you're actually factoring an infinite number of things. If you think about that, that was easy. <laughs> so any value of x, any value of y that you make, this will be a way to factor this. And there's one concrete example. You can make x and y whatever the shit you want to. Okay, maybe. So all that stuff here in green is just me doing extra shit on top. But I really want to show you a concrete example. People hate factoring because it's not concrete. But it is. You just don't realize it. It is a way to factor what this number would be if I knew what x and y was. If I don't know what x and y is, I can still do something. Thank God. Whatever. Exactly. Whatever deity you want to worship to. Now, go with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a very simple problem down because it's in preparation for the next level. Thank you.
Here's an example. Yeah, how do you factor this? Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. I told you it was going to be simple. What do they both have? A. a. So we can take an A out. What do you have left? X squared minus B. I love it. Now, my claim is I'm about to write that same exact thing down. This is the same thing. I love you guys. You guys are like, uh, okay, number one, it took longer for you to write it. So it's a really good indication that they ain't the same damn thing, John. This is x squared times something minus that thing times b. This is x squared times something minus that thing times b. They are the same. Do you know what a is? No. You don't know what A is. You know what X plus 4 is. No, I don't have a freaking clue. But don't both of them have it? So do you see how you took an A out because they both have it, right? So what do these both have, both of these terms? They, no, careful. They have an X plus 4. <laughs> He's got an X, right? This, this term has an X. Neither one of these terms has a 4. Neither one. And you guys are like, what the shit? Does 8 have a 4 in it? No. Does 8 have a 4 in it? Yes. Why? Because it's 2 times it's two times 4, right? Stay with me. Does 7 have a 4 in it? No. No. Even though 7 is 3 plus 4, when I say in it, I mean multiplication. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. So ne neither one of these has a 4. Nobody's got a 4. They both have an x plus 4. So I take it out, and what's left? X squared, X squared minus, B. minus B. The same thing we got up here, of course. So the thing that was repeated up here was an A. The thing that was repeated down here was an X plus 4. They both work the same way. Okay. Let's do another one of these. Uh, what you got, Jeff? What's up? Tell me. That's, that's the equation my friend was working on when he was killed. No, come on. Can't believe it, Jeff. All right. How many terms are there in this thing? Two. Beautiful. I love it. There's this and this. I kick so much ass. If you weren't going to say two, you see that there are two terms. What do they both have? Y minus one. They have a, what's that again? They have a, a, a minus seven. They have a Y minus seven, I like it. And they also have a, a squared. So let me write what's left. I had three A's, I took two, so I've got, I've got one left, right? Yeah. What about in this term, term here? I took everything, right? Plus a Y. Took everything. One, Careful. One. Something divided by itself. One. Okay. So just because a thing is more than one letter, it's contained. This is a certain number. This is a certain number. They both have the same thing. It comes out. Yes, sir. I got an Because they both had two A's. He's got three. So he's definitely got two and an extra one. That's why there's an extra one left. That's another way to kind of look at it. This guy only had two. If you try to take three from him, he's going to freak. That's why you take the lower power. So you don't make them freak out. Give me three. I only got two. Shit. Okay, maybe, maybe. All right, here's the... <laughs> you guys will love it. I'll have to tell you, it ain't going to end for a while. Mr. Woodman, it's going to keep going for a while. All right, here's the ultimate level on this kind of problem. And then I'll give you this handout. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, 
trying to be a Z at the end. Still factoring, right? Still factoring. Now you're ready. Now wait. Write that down and wait for me. How many terms are there? Four. Too damn many. I like that. We're going to cut it down to two in a minute. Too damn many. Does any, is anything shared by everybody? No. Can you take a Y out? No. Can you take an X out? Ah, shit. Can you take a 2 out? Damn it. <laughs> when you have four or more terms, you try something called grouping. You pretend like this is a problem on its own. Is there something that can come out of here? Yeah. What comes out? Four. X. So what's left out of this? Y plus... Two, I took the x out, right? Four divided by four, x divided by x, so you just get the y. Eight divided by four, two, x is gone. I do the same thing with this guy. Plus, what comes out of this? Z. Does he have a y? You see, so what can you take out is the thing that they both have, because that's what they would have gotten when they distributed. I'm just trying to undistribute. They must have both gotten a Z. And what's left? Now, how many terms are there? Yeah, and what do they both have? Y plus two. So I can take a Y plus two out, and now watch this kicks ass. What is, what is left? 4X plus Z. Here, take a minute and foil that. Even though I hate the word, I'll still use it because you guys know. Take a minute and foil that. Or at least draw a little picture or something. You guys, some of you guys are just staring at me. Take a minute and multiply this out. Multiply this out. Oh. <coughs> So you get, what do you get? You get 4xy, putting them in order, is that cool? 4xy <coughs> plus zy plus 8x plus 2z. Isn't that the same thing, just kind of out of order? Can I just rearrange those? <coughs> that and that, same thing. That's a way to check your work. How do you check it when you factor numbers? You multiply them back out to see if they become what the problem was, right? So how do you check factoring anything? You multiply your answer back out. So you simplify? Simplify, beautiful. So factoring is the opposite of simplify. When we do this, we are saying that this equals this <coughs> equals this. Well, then if you work this out, you better freaking get this or else you're wrong. <laughs> do you guys get that? Do you guys see that? A little bit? And again, there's varying different, uh, levels of comfortableness with factoring in here. So if you're really cool at factoring, just kind of hang out for a little bit. If you have no freaking clue, this is the time to ask questions. No idea why my accent's all over the damn place. All right. All right, let me do this. Let me give you this. What I've done on this, there is a... Once we get done with Chapter 6, I have a complete full sheet of all the different forms of factoring we're going to learn. I've just taken part of it up here at the top, so there's little examples of, of how to factor up top. I want you guys to work on these five problems at the bottom. What's up? Yes. Sure. 